Hi everyone, I am very excited about this video. I'm going to be sharing my favorite Christian romance books of all time. So I have been reading Christian romance for quite a number of years now and I have gathered up my favorite books that I've read so far. I know I'm going to be slowly adding to this list as I read more, but as of January 2023, these are my favorite books. Christian romance means so much to me just because faith means a lot to me and a relationship with God is like everything. And then putting romance into that just like gives my heart a lot of hope and it's just so beautiful to watch two people get to know each other and fall in love and have like Jesus be the center of it. So that's why I love Christian romance and I do have a lot of great favorites. None of these will probably be a surprise. I have had so many <laughs> recommendation videos go up over the years that I've been here and a lot of these books have shown up in those videos, but I did want one video that shows all of my all-time favorite books that I've read to date that are Christian romance spe specific. So I'm so excited to share these. There's going to be a lot of repeat authors here because I do have some favorite um, romance authors and I'm just going to start with my top favorite ones and then will go from there. And if you are interested in seeing even more recommendations, I will link some videos that are related to this um, down below. So a lot of my like Christian romance recommendation videos, I'll link them all down below if you want to see more. But these are the best of the best. So here we go. Um, my first number one favorite is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. This book means a lot to me because I read it when I was younger-ish. I was 18 when I read it. And it just impacted me so much because the way Francine Rivers wrote, first of all, Angel's character to be so broken and so lost, like she had no concept of God's love or who she was, like her identity, um, her own value. And even though it's like to the extreme, I feel like we all can relate to that. And especially when I was 18, I just was like, I just related to it so much to her character. There are instances when the voice of God is in this book and I was so like I've ne I had never read a book that had God speak in it before and it it just felt so real I felt the spirit of God with me while I was reading this book and just the constant like him telling me he loves me over and over and then also just it it gave me hope that there are men of God out there that are worth waiting for and so yeah. If you want to know more of my thoughts, um, I did do a whole live show discussing this book at the very beginning of 2022. So I'll link that video down below, but it is like over an hour long and I did it with my friend Amy. Um, and then I do have a movie review for this book. Um, it was turned into a movie in 2022 um, and I did do a review of that. So I'll link that down below too if you want to see more. So next, these two books are like really tied. And so I'm just going to show them both and then I, I'll talk about them in whatever order ends up happening. But these two books are like, I, I just couldn't pick, but if I had to, I can't, I can't, I try to make myself and I can't just know that these are like what, redeeming love and these two top three favorite Christian romance of all time. Okay. It's true. Um, okay. My stubborn heart. I read this one first, so I'll, I'll talk about this one first. This book the opening line, I cried. <laughs> and you want to know what it is? Here, I will tell you. Um, opening line of the prologue, okay? There was once a girl who'd been praying for her husband since the fourth grade. Over the years, she'd pray for his health, his happiness, for his protection, and okay, sometimes his good looks. She'd prayed that she would meet him when she was meant to, except that she hadn't. Yeah. Okay. I cried, literally. Actually, I, I cried at the first sentence, but I just kept reading because I couldn't help myself. Um, yeah. So this is about a woman who is, she's either 29 or 30 and she's not married yet. And it's in her heart. It's a dream in her heart to be married. And she's not. Um, she is a social worker and she's pretty burnt out after the Christmas season, I think. She's just like, oh, I need a break. Or after the spring. Anyways, I think it's set over summer. So she goes, she moves to where her grandma lives because her grandma just like has this house that she needs to renovate. So the girl's going to go help her grandma renovate and they do hire one handyman to help them with the renovation. And he is an ex pro hockey player and he has a whole backstory that you learn about. And it is about Kate 
getting to know Matt. And she has such a deep faith. She loves the Lord so much. And she listens to him. And she feels called to befriend Matt because he is very cold and hard and doesn't want anything to do with her. But she slowly breaks through his shell because she's quite outgoing and wonderful to be around. And watching their relationship grow just like made my heart ache because I loved it so much. And then like all the ups and downs, like with with Jesus at the center, okay? I just was like, I love this book forever. And I've read it multiple times and every time it makes me cry. Every time I'm just like, oh. Becky Wade's writing is just amazing. Like, I love this book, okay? Now, similar feelings with this book, okay? I haven't read, I didn't read this that long ago. I think in 2021, I read it for the first time or 2020, something like that. And when I tell you that I, I could not put this down, I was consumed by the first chapter, okay? It follows a girl who is a new Christian and she's moving back to her hometown because her mom has a medical thing going on. So she needs to be with her parents. Her parents are not Christians. They're very hard to be around. Um, and she grew up in this setting, but she left, she became a Christian and now she's back and she's struggling with all of the like reputation that she has in this town of her old life. Um, she has an ex-boyfriend who also is kind of terrorizing her and she's with her parents, which is awkward. And then there is a house beside her parents' house that was recently bought by the pastor of the town's son and he is renovating his house and they meet on at the fence, okay? At their backyards connect and they chat over the fence and sometimes she comes over. Their friendship, okay, I, I ate it up. Their, their, this relationship, okay, dream, a dream. And the faith too, though, like he's a Christian, she's a Christian, but they both are struggling. Like he's struggling for something you'll learn about. And she's obviously struggling. She's a new Christian. She has old habits still, and she's trying to like battle in her spirit, like, you know. And there are like scenes in this book that I just like would read over and over because I just was like, oh, like, you know, the romance scenes that are just like, it's adorable. I just could read it forever. Like, let this be real. You know, I love this book. It's also funny, which is nice. There's some humor in it, but there are some like in important topics like alcoholism and abuse and stuff like that. So be aware. I love this book. I love it. So top three, I feel like I could stop there, but there, are, there's more. Okay. So those are the top three, but there's some like super strong contenders as well. So I need to share them with you. Okay. Next up, My Foolish Heart, Susan May, Susan May Warren, Susan May Warren. Yeah. This book, I bawled my eyes out. Okay. Because where I was at in my faith journey, when I read this, it was exactly what I needed to read at the time. Okay. And the love of God poured over me as I was reading this book. So that's the thing about Christian romance. It's not just a light, fluffy time for me. It is like, like, it like, I don't know if I can say it grows my relationship with God, but it feels like it does. Like God speaks to me through these books. And maybe that makes me basic. I don't know. But I'm just saying, okay, this book, it got me through. I, I felt stuck. I felt stuck where I was in my mindset, in my perspective of my life, in my faith. And I just was like, what is going on? Who am I? Why am I doing this? What is, what is anything? And God just like completely laid everything out for me in this book. Okay. Can you, I don't even know. I actually have explained this book a little bit in my Christian girl book tag video. I'll link that down below. I do explain it, but Basically, you swap perspectives, a guy and a girl. The girl has agoraphobia and she is a radio talk show person. So she never has to leave her house. She works from home and she's been through a lot of trauma. So that's why she has agoraphobia and like super bad anxiety. And I totally relate to that. Okay. I've had bad anxiety in my life and to the point where like you, 
you don't know anything different and you like how will anything ever get better like you know that hopelessness and then you follow this guy who um was in the war of some kind and he actually had to amputate uh, one of his legs from the knee down but he really loves football and he is a coach so he moves to this town so they are neighbors and he just like is drawn to her right away because he sees the fear in her face and he just feels like someone needs to be her friend so it starts off with a friendship they are both christians but it's rocky the way their relationship developed was so sweet and like slow and steady like friendship first she had to really like learn to trust him really what made all the difference for this book was both of their faith journeys with god like she had to come to a place of trusting god too and like l giving her fear over to him and then with the guy the almost the guy's story spoke to me the most i will always remember this moment this the guy ends up talking to a pastor and the pastor gives him some insight into what this guy is struggling with and he's basically like let Jesus wash your feet. You are trying to impress him and keep him happy with you. And that's never what he asked you to do. And I just wept over that because I have lived that way where I feel like I have to be perfect for God to love me. And it's like such the opposite of what the gospel is. But like somehow you just believe that lie and then it, it happens. And I was stuck in that lie when I was reading this book. And when I read that scene, I just like put the, the book down and I was like, oh God. And I just cried because I was like, that's what I've been doing. And he just told me like, I love you no matter what you do. And I needed to hear that in that moment. So that is why I love this book. And that's why I recommend it. It's really good. Next, I guess I'll show both these books together um more books from Tammy L. Gray this is the first book in the series and the writing and the storytelling is so good okay that's what stands out and then the characters and the romance you've probably all heard a lot about this book from my channel and from other people's channels the uh, third book in the trilogy came out in 2022 so um we were all reading it and the first two books are definitely my favorite and I think this is my favorite of the whole trilogy though just because the romance between the characters was so satisfying. This is also friends to lovers and I think I really like that trope a lot and and not even like oblivious friends to lovers but like just when they like just connect on a friendship level first okay and then the faith journey okay the main girl is an atheist when this book starts and she slowly comes to know jesus and it is so beautiful i love stories like that i love this book the writing is so good and yeah blown away and then equally and and really it's the relationship in this one that stands out because the guy in it is just my kind of guy you know and I mean, there's lots of guys that are my kind of guy in these books, okay? And it's fine. Um, okay, next, stay with me, Becky Wade. This book has a special place in my heart because I read it when I was like really stressed out about life <laughs> and it put a smile on my face. It was just the sweetest romance. And again, I kind of related to the girl just because she was like a Christian speaker and author and like women's encourager person <laughs> like she was she's really famous and she's struggling with an addiction and I just like related to her struggle like you know she wanted to have this image that she had it all together when really she didn't and we you can all relate to that right and then her relationship with the main guy was so funny because he was like we cannot be together and she's like, it's, I know, it's fine. We're just going to be friends. And he's like, no, really. But he like couldn't resist. And she's like, but you're so great. And it wasn't like a forceful thing. It was like really cute because he like couldn't resist. And it was like, oh, man. And then there's like a mystery going on as well with her family. And then one of the main things that stood out was kind of like the wrap up to this mystery. Unconditional forgiveness and mercy were like the biggest theme and I just was like can I be that person like can I show someone mercy 
when they don't deserve it. It's tough. But the way that Becky Wade wrote that into this story was so inspiring. So yeah, and there there's just something comforting about this book for me. I just love it. So yeah. Okay, we've got to talk about Nicole Deese. <sighs> She's good too, okay? This book, this is a standalone before I called you mine. And okay, I like stories about single women who would love to be in a relationship, but aren't. <laughs> I can relate. And then just like their faith journey in that and then like pursuing what God's called them to and then like a guy coming alongside and then just like clicking. It's just so satisfying. So this book follows a woman who is older in her 20s and she really wants to be married. And what really she really wants to be a mother. She just has this mother heart. She feels called to adopt. And so she's not going to wait. She's just going to adopt as a single woman. And she starts that process. And then she meets a guy. And he is so solid. But it's kind of temporary that he's there. But they click so well. Plus, she's adopting and she has to stay single for that. And so both of their lives are like against them. But they are such a good pair. And I was so torn. Like that's like the way Nicole Deese wrote this, it was so good because I felt it like I was there. It, it felt so real. The faith in it is just top notch. So definitely recommend it. And then there are two other Nicole Deese books, of course. Um, these books, of course. Um, yeah, what a pleasant surprise. So these books are great. Okay, all that really matters is the first book. This is a duology. And I would recommend reading them in order just because you get introduced to the characters in this book, in this book, and it just like makes it better, I think. This is great. I love making videos like this. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about Then There Was You by Kara Isaac. This book blew me away. I only read it in 2022. It was my first book by Kara Isaac, and I was like, new favorite for sure because her writing felt similar to Tamiel Gray. I think that's the best comparison to make because it was funny. It was easy and quick to read. The story and the characters were like so exciting and interesting and I loved it. Um, it was set in Australia so that was really fun too and you follow this girl who is like out of church. She's like whatever about church because she was kind of burned by one in the states so she moves to Australia with her cousin um, to just get a fresh fresh start and she doesn't intend to get a job at this mega church but she ends up getting a job at a mega church and she works in the department where the lead singer of their worship band who is also the son of the pastor and his wife she works in his department <laughs> and it's their romance but it is definitely a hate to love situation which normally I don't like those tro that trope but this was done so well because it wasn't like a hate where it's like they are mean to each other they more so just annoyed each other unintentionally just by being themselves which was so much more fun to read and like it was funny um but then they like start to getting an understanding and their friendship grows and it's definitely friendship as well like hate to friends to love I guess and it's so funny okay but then the faith in it because it's set at a church this girl is like kind of figuring out how she feels about God and then the guy definitely has some big stuff in his life that she learns about and it's like oh I don't know about that and it was just really good so great romance super recommend okay next Lulu's Cafe T.I.L.O. I had no idea how good this book was gonna be but she wrote a very intense story and made it so deep and encouraging and hopeful and relatable okay so you follow this woman who is stuck in abu in an abusive marriage where it, like he's controlling she can't leave the house barely like she only oh, is only given like this amount of time to get groceries like that kind of thing and she learns that she's pregnant and he didn't doesn't want a baby but she's hiding it from him. And that's how it starts, like straight up. 
and I was like, whoa, what am I reading? Like, is this a Christian book? Because I don't even remember if she was a Christian at the beginning. I kind of think she wasn't, but I forget. You know from the back that she escapes and she's on the run and she finds herself in Lulu's cafe because she has nothing and she has nowhere to go. And Lulu sees her and Lulu is a Christian and she is like, that woman needs help. And so she, Lulu like takes this woman under her wing gives her a job, gives her a place to stay. And you watch this woman like find herself again um, and, and heal from all this brokenness. And at the same time, the young man who helps Lulu run her cafe is there. And it was really like a process of them trusting each other. So definitely friends to more. And then her also finding a faith in Jesus. And just the the parts of their relationship the, the way that it grew was so satisfying it was like so methodical it definitely is like a slower read at the beginning it's not slow but then it, like once she gets to, the, to lulu's cafe she's like it's a day-to-day -day kind of thing but like i was so invested by then like i couldn't put it down and it, it's amazing I highly recommend if you can handle that beginning part because after that it's not really it's a, like it's slightly graphic at the beginning i will say that like she does get beat up and so that was like hard to read, but I also was like, I like, I don't know. I, I couldn't put it down. It was amazing. So it, yeah, we're almost done. You guys, here we go. Um, a broken kind of beautiful. I love this book too. Um, mainly because it follows a similar plot line, I guess, or like theme that redeeming love follows because this girl is a model. It's set during modern day. She, it's basically this model's journey to, discover Jesus, discover that her value is not in her looks or her age, but it's in her identity in Jesus. And just seeing that was so beautiful. And then her romance was just like really sweet because they knew each other. So it was kind of like childhood friends to lovers. And the guy was just very sweet. I loved reading about him, loved it, highly recommend. Okay, back to Francine Rivers, these two books for sure okay bridge to haven this one is also similar to redeeming love but it's also set like a little bit more into the present and anyways you follow this woman who is an actress and she's like kind of trying to make it in hollywood and she has a past where she was just found by a river she was a baby found by a river by this pastor and she was raised by this pastor and his son and she ends up you know, leaving and whatever, but it's her life. And you also get perspectives of the guy she grew up with. And so it is a romance between them, but it is for sure like a redemption story for her. And I just, I was captivated by this book. I couldn't put it down. It made me cry. Um, I really liked it and it is quite intense. I mean, all of Friends Universe books are, so there you go. And then also the masterpiece, this one, the faith in it is what stands out the most. Um, the, the romance actually is a little bit like, this is like enemies to lovers where I'm like, he is so rude to you, have better standards for yourself, like do not give in. And then, I mean, he becomes a Christian and things work out totally. Like I'm totally on board with it by the end, but at the beginning you're like, what? <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, and then it's all fine. But yeah, so there is like a, a moment that this guy has with Jesus that stands out to me a lot and it was like so intense but encouraging and I was like wow it was such a good scene so highly recommend this um it's a good one okay and then the last two books to share are both by Julie Klassen so the first one is The Silent Governess this is my first ever book by her and it stood out so much because I just loved the character's faith in it and then the way that their relationship grew so um this woman turn of events happened she ends up being the governess of this big manor and the son of the manor is her love interest and they're both unsure about each other there's like a class difference there and i just loved it like it it was kind of a slower paced book but it worked for me because i just was so invested in this mystery there is like a pretty big mystery in this book so that was fun and really good faith I loved it. Um, and then next is The Tudor's Daughter. That's my other favorite by Julie Klassen. Um, just because the faith and the romance together were was like so satisfying because you follow this girl who goes to this like 
big manner um, to tutor the youngest sons of the family and she grew up with the older sons of the family so um, she knows the two older sons there's a bit of a love triangle there but the one she ends up with is the best and they have a moment together that's like romantic and faith-filled and they like pray together I just loved it so yeah um I love those books too okay those are all my favorite romances of all time my Christian romances of all time now I'm gonna make a different video of my favorite books of all time that is not gonna include these books. So these are just the Christian romance, okay? These are the best that I've read so far in my life, okay? I I will write them all down below. Let me know if you've read them. And if you haven't read some of these and you like the books that I usually like, you will like all of these books. I'm just gonna say it, <laughs> I think. And yeah, so that is that. This is a long video. Thank you so much for watching, but I do hope that you got some great recommendations. And if you have anything to recommend, let me know. I can't wait to read more books this year, but I wanted to kind of start out January sharing all of these books. You also could use this to fill in my reading challenge um, if you need some ideas. I also did already make a recommendation video for that, but here's another one. You know me, I love making these videos. And yeah, check the description. I'm gonna write a bunch of stuff down there and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks, bye. We are almost done. My booty is sore. Okay, so this is the first book that I 